right now you could be missing out on some of the best bass fishing that you will see all season long. I'm talking about the fall transition and especially if you're in the northern states, you are missing out. And that's what this video is all about. It's going to be a little quicker video. I'm going to be breaking down some quick tips, some of the best plastic, some of the best lures that you should be throwing right now to get you big fish and a lot of fish quick. Let's go. Your first time to the channel my name is chris this is lifeaholics fishing where i'm going to be bringing you the best that northeast has to offer as far as fishing goes i'm going to be giving you product reviews tips tricks beginners guides and all on this channel so if you find value from that content please consider subscribing all right so what is the fall transition pretty much you're looking for the shorter days colder nights you're going to notice your water temperatures are starting to go down that right there in the next couple of weeks on that is the fall transition for up in the north we're already in it if you are living in any of the northern states you've been in it for about i want to say two or three weeks now right now is prime time if down in the south you're probably another two or three weeks away but keep an eye out because the change happens like that it's very quick so what is so different in the fall transition that you need to be watching out for compared to the summer well, the summer you had your set patterns you knew where the bass were you knew what to throw and now all that throw right out the window because now you're looking at the same conditions as springtime spawning same type of action same type of activity except not with the bedding this they are all about moving into the creeks they are all about cornering in those bait fish following them wherever they go and trying to get in as much feeding as possible before the real winter hits and they all shut down. So right now you'll see the bait fish shad. We don't have much of that up here in the north. We mostly have bluegill, minnows, that kind of thing. So if you're on the reservoir, you're looking at creeks, channels, anywhere where there's springs coming in, that fresh water, that's where the bait fish are going. One big difference is the bait fish, they're all bunching in and becoming into bigger schools, which are called bait balls. You want to watch out for this. You can notice them. You'll see on the top of the water, you'll start seeing a lot more action. Those little fry, they're starting to pop up. You'll see bait fish just circling and you'll never usually have seen them in those parts. That right there is what you're looking for. If you see that bait fish there and those bait balls are going, you know for a fact that somewhere close by, the bass are definitely right there waiting to, for an easy meal and waiting to grab one of those guys that break off from the pack. This is a quick kind of rule of thumb for you, okay? The clearer the water, the deeper the fish. The dirtier the water, the shallower the fish. And that goes specifically for the fall transition, especially because the cleaner your water, that means that those bait fish are way out deep and they're trying to hide. But the bass are right behind them. And those bait fish will move and move and move all day onto points, to springs, back to coves. And those bass will follow. They're looking to get in as much feeding as they can. And they're the most active right now. But if you're looking at stained water, dirty water, then don't worry, they're coming up shallow. And that's where you want to be. Coves, springs, anywhere where there's a really nice current, high current. Believe me, this is the one time. I know it's very hard, especially from the bank, to be looking for that bait fish. But this time of year, this is when you will especially be able to see perfectly in the water, stained or not, where the bait fish are. Now, unlike summer, where the bass aren't coming into the shallows for for very long, they're coming in, eating, getting out of there, this is the time where they're gonna be coming up shallow, staying shallow longer. Each time, each day, as days keep getting shorter, they're up there longer before they get back down. Look for activity. If you see that stained water or clear water, you don't see any bait fish, well, then you know for a fact there are no bass there. Keep moving. I know it's hard as a bank fisherman to keep moving, but believe me, once you find that spot, you got yourself a good hour or two before those bass really key out of there. So you can get in quite a bit of action and then get out of there. Watch for where your depth is. You do not need to be on a boat for this. I fish from the bank most of the time. I just recently got a boat, so I don't even have electronics for that yet. So I still just go off of my maps, Google Maps. If you need to go to a welcome center or on your local lake, especially a state lake, go to the welcome center right there, right at the entrance, you'll see a map. Grab it and you can find your depths. Go to those shallow areas or the really deep. All right, so you located that bait fish. Now, where should you be looking for that bass? 
pretty much think of them just like a sheepdog. Sheepdog goes and corrals their herd, gets it all back in. Same thing with the bass. They're corralling those bait fish, getting it all nice and in tight, and they're just on the outsides ready to pick one off, come in and get that big or easy meal. And that's what you're looking for. The bass are suspended right now. They're staying up there, even midday, they're staying up in those shallows longer. So suspended baits, anything suspended that's in the middle column of the water column, that's what you're looking for. This time of year is probably the best time if you are a very, very live action type of fisherman that you love, cast, cast, cast. You're looking for fast moving baits. These are the times to be throwing them. Now, if you don't want to go out and spend money or change up your normal tactics as far as your choice of bait, your plastics, whatever have you, then all you need to do is just decide to dial down a bit. Dial down and change your colors, that's it. If you're at a five inch Senko, come down to a four or three. Get down there to that bait fish size. Change up your color. Something as simple as that right now is going to throw off the bass and they're gonna see that something different and smack it. Especially if you've been using the same tactics all summer on the same fisheries, that little change of making it smaller and changing the color will make a world of difference your next trip out. Now on the flip side of that, as much as you can dial down this time of year, you can actually flip that and go for your biggest baits and lures this time of year. I know it sounds weird, it's kind of, you know, contradictory, but believe me, this time of year is known from professionals, seasoned anglers alike, for people catching their PB, their personal best, their biggest fish of a lifetime is mostly through the fall transition. Now, what baits should you be sizing up to and what baits should you be throwing? Now, there's a couple key ones that I'm going to be dialing in on that I throw that I'm gonna be sharing with you. And now we're gonna go through over just a quick scope of them before we wrap it up this video. Real quick before I get into the specifics on lures, baits, and what you should be throwing, if you're finding value so far from this content, please consider subscribing and also hitting that little bell next to it so that way you're notified of all my new videos when I put them out. Also, if you hit that like button, and if you know a friend that would also find value from this content, please consider hitting that share button and letting them know about it so that way I could too help them so that way it will help improve their overall experience their next time out on the water. Now, as a quick tip also, before we get into these baits and lures, if you're from the south or if you're in those mid-range states, if you're not too sure if the fall transition is really here for you right now, or if you should be changing your tactics up and doing these tips, tricks that I'm giving you, consider getting yourself just a small thermometer. Now, if you're a boat fisherman, you probably have all your electronics, or even if you don't, this right here, you can get this at your any of your sporting goods stores. I'll link one below in the description that you can find. It's just your basic water thermometer that you're able to put out. It floats, get yourself a temperature reading. The temperatures you're looking for, water temps anywhere between 60, 65, anything below 70. If you're right around then, then you should be changing your tactics and doing these specifics that I'm telling you about when they're chasing the bait fish, that is the water temperature you're looking for. All right, so let's get into these specific lures so you know what to be throwing. All right, so first thing I'm gonna start off, I'm gonna run through some of these quickly and get to my personal favorites and the ones that I believe that you should be throwing absolutely right now, no matter what, that you're missing out on if you're not throwing them. So let's get into these popular ones first. First, top water, let's get right into that. Right now, you want whopper ploppers? Definitely buzz baits. Buzz baits, if you're a buzz bait person right now, this is your time of year. Right now, because they're suspended up, because they're up in the shallows, top water is dynamite in the early morning, evening, even in the afternoon for a short time. Buzz baits right now are most commonly getting caught right now. Aside from that, your whopper ploppers. Now, this one is my personal favorite, okay? It makes a lot of noise. And that's what you look for. You want to make a lot of commotion. You want to be coming through quick. Like I said, this time you could be shooting really, really fast. You don't need to be worrying about slowly dragging it through. No, you can burn this across the water, no problem. So these right here is my favorite. Love to fight lures. Like I said, they will be in the uh, description below all of these products. So you uh, can get go right over and get yourself some if you don't have any. Now, like I said, the Whopper Plopper as well. These are the standard river to see. Now I did tell you about dropping down your size. Now you can either go up 
to the 110 size, like my Love to Fight lower size, or when I said dial down, go right here and get yourself a 75. See how much smaller that is? And look at it, especially if you're in the north, the bluegill color right now like that, it's perfect. Make sure you're careful blow, don't burn it too fast, because these guys, if you're going too fast with them because they're smaller, they're just gonna start going crazy out of control. A nice, easy pace going, to, but you can burn them as well, cover a lot of water with either one of these top waters and also the buzz baits. Now the buzz baits as well, like I said, you could either go really big or you could also dial down and go to the smaller ones. Do not be afraid to go for these right now. Top water is killing it. Moving right down the line to your next fast action stuff that's right up there with those burning is going to be spinner baits. Now right here, you're definitely, right now you're gonna be wanting that extra commotion. White are great colors. Definitely the double willows, perfect because it makes a lot of vibration. It also gives off a pretty good flash, whether it's cloudy day, sunny day, but you're able to shoot and burn those through really, really quickly. So those willow blades right here, perfect for this time of year. And white is good for any time of day, cloudy, sunny, dirty water, clear. White is a good choice. Now, like I say, you can either go up a style. Now this is my personal favorite. This one's from the Guggen Squad, okay? This one has one Colorado and a willow. And I love this because, you know, you also have right here that little rubber band. You don't have to worry about your line going off and bending up and making it all crazy. And that's something you could also do with all your other spinners as well. A little orthodontist band. If any of you guys remember those or even a really small, tight rubber band. Put it right there, that's it. That's all you need to do. Right there in that section. Rubber band and you don't have to worry about your line sliding up and down and getting all frustrated with it. Because believe me, as a bank fisherman, I understand how that can get frustrating after a while. And like I said, if you go down and you downsize one, here's another option as well. Now, if you're a river fisherman, smallies, now this is a killer color for that, the black and chartreuse, but this also does work in any of you know, your lakes reservoirs. Just remember when you're downsizing, you also have to downsize mentally too. So that way you're reeling a little slower because if you're going as fast as you are with the big ones, it's going to be messing up the action. You're gonna miss out on some good bites. All right, so now personally, I do not throw these too much because of the whole bank fishing aspect because they are a nightmare when you're coming from deep into the shallow, especially not being able to judge if there's rocks, logs or anything, but we're talking about jerk baits and square bills. Now, like I said, the bass are suspended. So suspended jerk baits like this that are staying there at the top, just below the surface, bringing it through. And I also classify this, this is technically a top water bait, but I do classify it also underneath the square bills as well, a wake bait. Now there are different types of wake baits. Now this one is my personal favorite. This one's called the Joker Craw. This is from Love the Fight Lures, another one from Skylar. These are fantastic. I'm definitely gonna be throwing these. They make a lot of commotion and it doesn't matter how fast you're reeling, it always stays the course. It's perfect. Absolutely fantastic this time of year. Now, aside from that, I'm talking about your square bills as well. Now, I'm gonna be talking about this in a few, but red, right now, red, this signifies a craw color, crawfish. That's why you'll always see, you know, those, this is a killer craw from Love the Fight Lures. They also have some other red ones here, but they're usually signified craws. And right now, this time of year, craws are where it's at. We'll get into that in just a minute. The other thing you could be throwing right now, helps you burn a lot of water, a lipless crankbait. Now this one is my personal favorite. I've had a lot of luck with this one this year. This is the Guggen Squad. I believe it's the Recon, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I'm actually, I don't remember the exact name. I just know it as the Guggen Squad lipless crank. Again, in that crawfish red color. This time of year, you're looking to burn water fast to find out where those bait fish are and find those suspended bass. So if you're on a boat, on shore, it doesn't matter. You're looking to burn quick. On shore, I wouldn't really be throwing a lipless too much. I'd stick to a wake bait or a spinner just because you have less likely a chance of losing it. But it's an, definitely a good choice for boat fishing because you're able to burn water and definitely cover a lot of uh, water very quickly with a square bill or a lipless crank. Now, last two things I would also be throwing before I get into my absolute favorites right now that I am throwing nonstop. You're talking about your bladed jigs. All right, white is definitely a great color this time of year. This one's just your standard chatter bait, okay? Bladed jig, whatever you may call it. And also, if you're throwing swim baits and stuff, just look for that underspin. This is that VMC underspin. 
pair it up with just the standard swim bait. Right now, this time of year, anything, match the hatch. Whatever is in your lake, bluegill, craw, whatever, match the hatch, get the same type of color swim bait, throw that little underspin to give it that extra commotion and vibration, and believe me, you will definitely be killing it out on the water. Now let's get into my personal favorites, things that you should definitely be throwing, I promise you, okay? Now do not change this video, all right? Now the two techniques I'm talking about, of course, is the Carolina rig and a drop shot. Other than that, the other thing I'm using is a skirted jig. This time of year right now is the height of crawfish time, okay? Now, if you didn't know this, springtime, March, May, that's their most active mating time. But they have a second period where they mate as well, and they're the most sexually active, which is during the fall transition. Right in that 65 degree water temperature, that's when you're looking for crawfish. Now, crawfish, can be thrown on any water. It does not matter if you have them on your river, your lake, whatever. It doesn't matter if you don't have it, you could be throwing it. Give it a good presentation. Now, real quick, let's look at the uh, skirted jigs. Right now, now this is by far, I did a battle of the cross on TikTok not too long ago. The link will be in the description where I showed the durability and the presentation of these, okay? Now the durability on the cross, pretty much I put, these are the Nico fishing cross best the most buoyant and the most durable crawfish you will ever buy i promise you that they're priced the way they are for a reason you'll buy one pack of these to five pack of a z-man or Guggen. okay now these they are very buoyant they look very realistic coming through the water now i always pair these up right on the nice skirted jig this one's a brown okay this color here as you see, those craws are right up. That is amazing. And this one right here is also, this one's Galaxy. This is my favorite color by them. Uh, this is on a black and blue skirted jig. Like I said, this is by far, this has been definitely a good color, okay? It's a little translucent, but it's a black, sparkling Galaxy. Definitely a great, great color. Now, if you didn't know this, for their mating seasons, okay? Doesn't matter if it's spring or fall. The males go through this thing called molting, and that is the most vulnerable time of a crawfish's existence. Right after they mated with their females, the males molt. They lose their hard skin, uh, gender specific organs, and then they turn into this red color. And that is why you see red colored baits. They also have this, my favorite, that I've been using right now on my drop shot. That, look at that color. This is right here. This matches perfectly. It's called the magma color, but this matches perfectly to what a male goes through after molting. This is exactly what they'll look like. And at, during this time, it's not like when they're actually mating. Mating is some of the best time bass will get. So right before fall transition, a little bit into it, it's the best eating times that bass usually have, but especially right as they're molting because they're easily seen and they're most vulnerable because those males are just trying to hide. The females have the eggs on them, their babies on them, and they're trying to be protective. So they're more on the defensive, claws are up, but that's what works about these baits because they stand straight up in the defensive position. Now that's also a good time to be throwing your tubes. If you didn't know this, tube jigs are meant to signify crawfish with no limbs no claws no extra extremities that is what tube jig mostly imitates and that right there pristine meal for bass throw in those tubes you could also be throwing creatures like this the helical knight perfect right now these are by nico fishing another buoyant bait as well other than that i would also be throwing a cinco or a worm these right here are the Nico fishing worms. These are turning into my absolute favorite worms to be throwing. You can throw them weedless, put them on jig, you can cut them. These are right now, they are hollow. You can see right, I'm not sure if you can see right through, but the hole through it makes it so that way your hook's going right in. You got the line, nice skinny line, bringing it right out. And then you also have the optional hole right there. You're able to make this rattle a bit, put in some little uh, sinker weights, put in some things to give it that action. 
because right now this time of year, it's all about commotion. Make noise with your baits, okay? Way to do that with these, Carolina rig. Carolina rig is easy. Set them up at home the night before or right before you go out, set them up at home so you do not waste time on the water. You put your bullet link, your egg sinker, or just your typical, you know, Carolina rig tungsten, anything that works. Quick tip, do not put your glass bead right next to your lead weight or your tungsten weight. Either add a bullet or a stud. Either add a bobber stopper in there or add a plastic bead like I do, which is right here. First tip, I add a bobber stopper before I add my egg sinker and then I'll add a plastic bead and then a glass bead. This one I rigged quickly to show for this video I did it wrong. Egg sinker, plastic, and then glass. Reason for it is because if you're getting into that big bass and you're doing a really hard hook set, you're gonna shatter that glass bead. So having something in between that to stop that definitely will be helping you in the long run. Oh, in the next day or two, I'll be gonna be putting out specific videos on tips, tricks, deep diving into drop shotting and Carolina rigs. For today, I want you to know that for the best, best baits right now that you can be using for a drop shot or a Carolina, is crawfish crawfish the helglomites even even a nice stick worm and even if you don't have the stick baits the regular nico bass worms get yourself a senko drop it down a bit put it on a drop shot so many people hear drop shot and they think finesse slow slow you know not catching big fish that's wrong you could put, be putting a five inch senko or bass worm on a straight drop shot and be catching monsters right now i'm throwing my carolina rig on my bait caster running it on my 12 pound mono. Now make sure when it comes to your drop shot or your Carolina rig, Carolina rig especially, use mono, use a light wire hook, so that way you have nothing holding that bait down and you're letting it suspend up. Like I said, right now, your best choice, these are by far, I'm actually gonna show you, watch, ready? Look how far you're able to do that. And still, perfect absolutely perfect you see that and they float they are the most buoyant baits you'll ever get they float so perfect if you're learning the carolina rig and you're trying to practice better this is the time year to do it those crayfish will get up there and they'll suspend for as long as you do it now summertime you're looking at anywhere between a 18 inch to like three to four foot leader from a carolina rig not in the winter and fall transitions shorter you're gonna go from six inch to 18 inch max because colder water definitely have shorter, you're gonna be shallower. So definitely drop down your leader size. Now, aside from that, get out there. That's it, get out there, be fishing right now because right now you are going to probably catch some of the biggest fish you'll get this entire season. You might not be getting a lot of bites and if you're not getting bit after some casts, don't be lazy, move, move a lot. Find those bait fish. Find where those bass are suspended because once you do, hold on for dear life and have a blast because you're gonna be smacking them out. But don't forget, they do not stay there for too long. You got a window of maybe an hour or two before they move. That's in the middle of the day. But if you find them in the early morning or especially in the evening, right at that time where it's the failing light, then you've got them locked and have fun. All right, guys, so it's time to wrap up this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, it was a little bit shorter than my usual videos, mainly because I realized that right now the fall transition is going on and no one in the north is telling anybody. I want you guys to know so that way you could be out there, hopefully catching your PVs of the season, if not at least having fun and catching fish. Like I said in the earlier parts of the video, anything that I talked about in today's video will be linked in the description below, especially the Nico fishing baits, those Helgramites, the Craws, and the Bass Worms. All three will be linked in the description below. Make sure you get over there. They are hotcakes. Right now they are Amazon's choice for best Helgramites, so definitely you're gonna wanna get them before they sell out. Aside from that, again, if you found value from this content, please consider subscribing and hitting that bell right next to the subscribe button. That way you're notified of all my new videos when they come out. Other than that, hit that like button and Please share this to a friend that you think might find value from this content as well. Now, here's a question for you. I want you in the comments below to please let me know, have you fished the fall transition before? What are you throwing during the fall transition? And have you got your PB yet? 
definitely in the comments below let me know and be looking out for my next videos coming out in the next couple of days on the carolina rigs drop shots and starting next week i will be doing a full series showing you restoring a boat aluminum boat and stripping the paint doing complete work up on it sealing it repainting it all of that and i'm bringing all of you along for the journey so please watch out for those videos hit me up on social media make sure you check out the description for more fun stuff and like always guys go have fun fishing get out on the waters and tight lines as always thanks for watching